Hey lovelies, happy midweek, happy Canada Day. It's July 1st and I am sending all my love and my wishes to all my fellow Canucks. My family are in Toronto now and I miss them so much and I am thinking of them and uh, all my fellow Canadian followers on here. I hope you have the most wonderful day celebrating such a wonderful country and all the opportunities that um, Canada has given to many of us. I spent a bit of my time growing up in Toronto and uh, yeah, I'm sending so much love today on Canada Day. I should be wearing red, um, but you know, with this backdrop, it would just completely color clash, I think. Um, my husband Carl would be laughing at me right now and say, you sound like such a fashionista. But um, I, I'm wearing red and white in my heart today. <laughs> hey guys, it's so lovely to see you make yourselves feel all comfy. It's a bit gloomy and gray outside today, but I, I kind of like it because it makes, makes it feel cozier inside with my cup of tea. I've got um, Barry's Irish, uh, Irish breakfast, Irish afternoon. No, Irish breakfast, yes. Barry's Irish breakfast tea is my favorite. Uh, <laughs> good to see you. Okay, let's do some shout outs. Hello, underscore, I'm Teresa. Happy Canada Day to you. Mermaid of Agrabah. Oh, that's a lovely name. Advantage, underscore 77. Karen Ray, hello. Charlotte, under the feather. Oh, it's so good to see all of you and Emma. Well, today is my 14th session of Tea with Karen. Thank you so much for giving up an hour of your day to spend not only with myself, but with my dearest friends. It means so much, you guys. Just, you make this quarantine so much more brighter and I can't thank each and every one of you enough. Now, I know for some of you who live in Europe uh, or Canada, you've started to go back to work or you're already at work. And I know this might spur on a lot of mixed feelings, maybe feelings of relief, comfort, of having a routine again, um, or maybe moments of um, concern and trepidation. And I completely sympathize on all fronts and please know that I'm sending you guys so much love and light and good energy your way. Just promise me one thing though, that you guys remain to be um, vigilant in uh, keeping yourself safe and healthy. Uh, speaking of which, you guys, I can't thank you enough um, for your kind, beautiful hearts. For those of you that have placed an order for my Ready for a Whole New World t-shirt campaign benefiting the NAACP Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I love you guys so much. This t-shirt is definitely one of my favorites um, and very close to my heart. Big shout out to Michelle Henning and Riley over at Stands for their brilliant minds and ideas. And when I saw the final artwork and saw the magic carpet and one of the tassels raising it's tassel <laughs> up in solidarity um, for Black Lives Matter. I, I was really teary. And I know it's something that Jasmine would be so incredibly proud of and honored to be a part of. And I can't wait uh, to, to wear that shirt along with all of you who have placed an order with, um, with such pride uh, for a more um, inclusive and loving, compassionate, empathetic and equal world. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, lovelies. And the t-shirts are on sale until Friday. So you have until Friday if you haven't placed an order. Uh, we have all sizes available um, and we have the unisex crewnecks and the ladies v-necks. So you can go to shopstands.com. And to answer your question, we do deliver internationally. So shopstands.com. I'll post the link again. 
uh, later on here on my uh, social media platforms. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you guys. And for those of you who want to catch up on Tea with Karen, you guys can tune in anytime uh, at www.teawithkaren.com. You'll see all the Tea with Karen challenge uh, posts up there. So you'll see your lovely faces there. And you'll also see all the Tea with Karen sessions. So you can catch up, I think. Well, yes, there's 13. 13 chat sessions for you to catch up on. Um, I know that um, a lot is happening right now in the news and it can be really overwhelming and just make sure you're checking in with yourselves and um, sending lots of good energy and, and taking those necessary breaks when you guys need to. And deep breaths, it's a lot, a lot happening. But I'm gonna get into that with my dearest friend who I'm so excited to be having tea with. Lovely, wonderful, magical, effervescent Rose Reynolds. Um, I can't stop smiling when I say Rose's name because she is, um, she is truly a beautiful Rose and such a lovely human being who um, I'm so honored to call such a dear friend and I miss her so much. I miss her so much and I'm so happy that um, she is going to be joining us for tea. Uh, I'm going to find Rose, talk amongst yourselves. Let me see. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, there she is. You can follow Rose at Rose A R E Y N. And there she is. Hello, beautiful girl. <laughs> Hi. Oh, it's so lovely to see your beautiful face. Oh. It's so lovely to see your gorgeous face. I miss you. How are you? You know, all the better for seeing you. You just oh, love God bless you. You. Yeah. lighting up my my phone screen. <laughs> well, exactly the same. And what such kind words? And I, I feel exactly the same way about you. My kind of you're my English rose across the sea. <laughs> <laughs> You've gone all quiet though. I need to turn you up. I don't know why it's yeah. gone all quiet. There we go. There um, you are. How are you, love? I'm well, thank you. Yeah, I'm just, um, I'm just in quarantine, you know, <laughs> as, you quarantine. As, as we all are at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Because what are we like month two, three now? It's, I know it's, uh, it's 15 and a half weeks today. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I still sort of have my sanity intact, I think. Um. I know. It's like, it's a weird one when it first started as well. Because I don't know, as actors, we can be kind of introverted extroverts. So we kind of, we like our own space. And so when quarantine happened, it was a little bit like, okay, so we spent a lot of time on our own or in our houses anyway, working on our work, like our scripts or ourselves and getting better as actors. But in the beginning, it was kind of like, okay, well, this is a weird new normal, but it's, it's relatively normal. Yeah. Um, and then as it kind of elongated, it just became a bit like, oh, this is, this is not normal. This is, you know, because I think what hit me the most was not being able to see friends and family and not being able to hug my mom, you know, and just having like FaceTime with my mom or doing the two meter thing or standing outside her door while she's behind a window. I mean, not being able to physically hold her, yeah. that was the hardest part for me. For, for, I'm in her bubble now, which is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So I can be in, 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 up in her space. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, like, it was really difficult. And in the beginning as well, I was quarantining on my own. So it was just me mm -hmm. in, in my lovely little house, but it was just me kind of kicking it. And um, my boyfriend's been back now for um, about a month. Um, and it's, oh. nice to have a, it's nice to have a quarantine buddy, which is gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it's weird because he's been away, he works for the armed forces, mm -hmm. so he's been away um, for five months, and he, so he doesn't know what normal is, um, and he comes back, and this is, this is what he's come back to. He hasn't seen a pub for over a year, <laughs> you know, he, he hasn't held his mom in about six months, seven months, so it's just, it's, it's crazy having to adapt, but um, you kind of... What I also think is it makes you realize what's important, you know, and what you can live with and what you can live without. 
Um, so you become very selective about what you need, which is kind of liberating in a way. I don't oh, know how you feel. You, we have the time now to reflect. And yeah. when you have that time to reflect, and we do a lot of soul searching, it brings the gift of clarity. And um, I'm so grateful for that. But like you and like many who are tuned in, I'm sure. Hang on, I'm just going to turn this down a bit. Um, a lot of us are feeling the, the separation anxiety a bit. Like I, my mom and my family, all of them are in Toronto. And it just hurts my soul so much, especially when you have elderly parents. Um, you want to spend more and more time with them. And it just hurts me. I feel like, you know, there is a part of me that's really frustrated because I feel like, you know, damn you. It's, it's like you're robbing me of, of this valuable and precious time with, with my family, with my parents. But at the same time, um, it's, you know, it is what it is. And I keep saying to the gang here is that we have the power to control the way we, we react to things. And I just, you know, thank goodness for FaceTime. It's not all apocalyptic and that we can we can still have the facetime connection or skype or you know with whichever helps you know just to see each other's faces all the time and um i think i talk to mum and dad like i don't know four or five times a day oh lovely but, but it, you know there is this little part of me that just kind of haunts me and just wonders when yeah. when am i going to see my parents again yeah. and you know, I can't think about it too much because then I get a bit upset. Yeah. And uh, like you, I just, I miss, I miss hugs. I miss, I miss that connection, that warmth, you know, and I, don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful I have Carl and Milo gives the best cuddles. Of course. But, you know, I want to cuddle with my best friend, Rose. I want to cuddle with, you know, my mum, my dad. And, you know, so it's just those things that, uh, that can be a bit tough. But then when I, when I get into those moments, I just immediately do something that will yeah. shift the energy and, and change it and get me to think of, of happier things, you know, or I'll call my mom right away or I'll, I'll do some chores. There's something <laughs> so therapeutic I'm learning in this pandemic of doing mundane things, not things that I would normally find mundane or have neglected, like admin paperwork or no. organizing the doing your doing, yeah oh and doing spring cleaning and all that i'm actually finding a lot of delight in it i can't believe i'm saying that because that would never happen under normal circumstances would i ever love doing any of that yeah. but um but yeah i i kind of find i find it really therapeutic <laughs> I think, I think first I'm, I'm so with you on that i think for the first month my house has never been cleaner. And like, I would, I would clean some sort of room every single day. And I was going, now's the time, you know, spring clean. Quarantine's happened for a reason, in the spring. Yeah. So now I'm I was spring cleaning in the beginning and now it's all gone to rack and ruin. But in the beginning, I was just <laughs> like, getting everything sorted. And it was great to have, as you say, that time to get things that you hadn't got around to yeah. and, and kind of, and getting them done. And as you say, when you do kind of, you do feel those pangs of anxiety or you do feel those pangs of loneliness or separation and things like that. Just doing something slightly active, just getting outside of your brain, whether it's a physical kind of change, you go for a walk, you go for a jog or you do whatever, or you just, you pick up, I don't know, just pick up a guitar or you pick up, you know, something or, or write or do anything that just gets you outside of your brain. I did yeah. something, there's something, um, that uh, is a kind of an actor book called The Artist's Way. I don't know if you know I about that. I love that book by Julia Cameron. Exactly. So yeah. that book is amazing. And you don't have to be an actor to have it, obviously. It's, it's kind of a spiritual book at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I started playing with that in the beginning of journaling. So you write, it's 10 pages, isn't it? 10 pages. Yeah. Or yeah, where you just kind of, you just write what's in your head. And it can yeah. be, I'm writing 10 pages. I'm writing nonsense. This is all just, but you can't take your pen off the paper. You have to keep yeah. writing and just keep writing. And it's so amazing what just comes out of your head and onto the paper. And then you're meant to just close it and not look at it. And then you're just meant to put it away. And it's just so amazing. And then you, you revisit it like months or even years mm -hmm. later. It's like a weird journal. 
and you see some of the stuff you've written and some of it is really profound and some of it is I'm writing this I'm writing this I'm mm -hmm. writing this over and over again but just getting 10 pages out and not thinking and just not thinking that it has to be right or it has to be perfect we put so many high expectations on ourselves and that was the other thing in the beginning of, of uh, lockdown as well is that I found myself buying in, like buying into this whole hustle hustle culture which you know that there is there's so definitely a time and a place for learn that language learn that guitar learn or read that book and all of this stuff but there's also a time to just sit and be there's also a time to just do nothing yeah. because i think there's we get caught up in i'm not doing enough i'm not doing enough why mm -hmm. people are excelling people are you know changing the world and you go well, start with you first, you know, start what makes you happy first, and then you can go out and explore and encourage others to do the same, and then you can build. But if you're constantly trying to chase things, you're just going to get wound and wound and wound really tight. And I found yeah. myself really struggling with that in the beginning of not you doing know, I'm so I'm, I'm so glad that you, you mentioned that. There's, um, there's a, a profile page on Instagram. Um, so guys, Rose mentioned, in your homework books, if you want to write down, The Artist Way by Julia Cameron, such a wonderful way to literally, and I don't say this negatively, say this negatively, I say it endearingly, that you can literally vomit your thoughts out on paper. And you know what? I'm sure when you go back to reading it, like Rose said, some of you will be like, wow, did I really write that? Yes. It could be quite groundbreaking and profound and, and, and help you in so many ways. Um, by looking back at your thoughts and your thought patterns. But there's a profile page on um, Instagram that I really liked and started following called um, at talk space, all one word. And they mentioned what Rose was just saying, quick ways to reduce stress. And I reposted it on my Instagram stories. And they say, call a loved one and talk it out. If your phone is a source of stress, try putting your phone on do not disturb mode. Um, they say social interaction daily is so important, at least half an hour. So if you can get that on FaceTime or Skype um, or even through a phone call, that's so important to keep connected during this quarantine period. Um, and as Rose said, reconnect with your creative side. Write, draw or paint. You may even try adult coloring books, which I love um, yes. for stress relief. My gosh, I... I started coloring in my ad those adult coloring books. They're amazing. I'm like, why did I ever stop this? I mean, as a child, we did it so much. Why did we ever stop that? It brings me so much joy. No. And like you said, it takes you out of your head. Um, and, and just, I, it's just so euphoric. I, I don't know. I highly recommend it, um, getting out those uh, coloring books. Um, they also mentioned set aside time to pick up a book that you enjoy and read. Um, with no distractions, that's the tough, toughest bit I find because we we are in such a culture where there's so many distractions and short attention spans that reading, um, even if you can read for 10 minutes straight, is an achievement. And then you just get better and better at it, I find. Um, so I've been doing that and trying to discipline myself with creating some sort of routine in this new norm. Mm -hmm. um, that's one. Go on a short walk or run outdoors if you're able to, obviously social distancing, wearing a mask, um, complete one or two sh short chores that you've been putting off. <laughs> Cleaning can be a good way to slow down and practice mindfulness. And finally, the other suggestion, listen to a few of your favorite songs. While you're listening, try singing along, dancing, or even paying attention to your breathing. And I love that so much. That is gorgeous. It's so nice. Music is, I was playing, um, uh, Motown music, um, especially during, you know, Black Lives Matter, they, they say you've got to amplify melanated voices. You should listen to um, follow uh, profiles from black activists or the black foundations or even um, black influencers. And I'm meeting so many wonderful, wonderful human beings and learning so much. I actually, two of my favorites, I think, Rose, you'll like this one. I posted the other day, um, Fleur Delis speaks, and she she cuts out, she handwrites these um, just positive affirmations, um, and and she holds them with her hand, and it's so wonderful. And you can follow her at Fleur F L E U R 
D-E-L-I-S-S Speaks. And she wrote this one yesterday that was so brilliant. The presence of struggle does not indicate an absence of strength. The strongest people have struggled, fought bravely, refused to give up, and were transformed in the process. You will too. I just love that so much. And she's got all of these on her page. And trust me, you'll, you'll walk away feeling really good about life. And um, another shout out to Ohio Ma. He's so wonderful. He's talking about if you see a decree, a decrease in um, BLM content on social media, it means that you're not following enough of those profiles. Um, and I highly encourage you to, and you can give him a follow on O-H-I-O-M-A. He is so wonderful and is taking the time to post his thoughts. Um, even though it's not on our black brothers and sisters to educate us, uh, he still takes the time to um, share his thoughts and perspectives and his insight, which is so incredibly helpful um, for non-BIPOC. And uh, it, it's, it's a really great profile. So I highly recommend uh, his page as well. But I was listening to Motown music. Um, my parents brought me up on copious amounts of Motown music when I was a little girl. So I yes. had Marvin Gaye playing, you know, yes. speakers, and I was just having a little dance. And then, um, and then we played uh, Bee Gees, and Carl just got up and he started dancing. He dances very badly, but nonetheless, no, he, he was so <laughs> with his cheesy moves. And, and we were dancing, and it was so wonderful just to loosen things up and shake things yes. out a bit, you know? Yeah. It was just really lovely. Yeah, just what? move. Move your body. Like, we've been given these bodies. They were created to be moved. And, like, whatever that means for you, which is so gorgeous. It doesn't have, you know, you don't have to run a marathon. You yeah. can just, like, you just, like, I don't know, just move and be in your body. It's amazing. <laughs> Well, we know you're a good mover. You're a great dancer. I like to know what you're like, Miss Rose, on the stage. <laughs> okay, when well, I hear a good tune, I'm gone. I know, so am I. It's like, and I was so sad at the last one as well in New York when I couldn't, I couldn't speak. And like that was, that was interesting for me actually, not being able to speak because I'd go into grocery stores or something, and I felt like I didn't have an identity and I couldn't express myself or, or kind of and say what I needed. Um, and then it was so interesting what I had to compensate instead. So it was a lot of gestures and a lot of just whispering and facial <laughs> gestures just to make sure that they understood what I was saying. But it was, it was kind of not having a voice. It was horrible. It was really demobilizing and kind of just stuck. I felt completely outside of my body and just losing that voice was just, even for a day, it was horrible. Horrible, horrible. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, I miss the conventions too. It's, uh, and, and you know, to, to segue from what you just said, you know, thinking about everything that's happening now um, with racial inequality and everything, mm. imagine they feel that their voices haven't been heard. Exactly. For, for over just over 400 years, if not longer. 401 years, exactly, yeah. You know, I was looking, because um, I saw... Um, uh, the Clarence House uh, profile and Prince Charles was talking about uh, a week ago back home in the UK marks the anniversary um, your boyfriend will know this about this too especially about the HMT Empire the wind rush um, yes and so, yeah. yes and so for those of you who don't know it was um, back in 1948 where the HMT Empire wind rush carried um, hundreds of people from the Caribbean and had invited them over to help rebuild Britain post World War II. So um, it is a reminder of the celebration of the contributions made by those uh, who, who came along and um, our black brothers and sisters uh, who helped create um, a better Britain. So um, that was so nice to do, to read up more on that. And I find that you know now that we're at home we have the time to go and and educate ourselves and to keep That's learning what we keep saying, wasn't she when you have she said we've got this time to reflect and really sit with the questions which i thought was really well phrased yeah. you sit with the questions i think that's yeah. really interesting yeah and it's you know we've been talking in the past two sessions too that 
we're constantly learning every day and it's something that shouldn't go away it should be part of the new norm um but at the same time there's so much that we have to unlearn as well that we don't realize could be an implicit bias or yeah. um you know and it, and they are uncomfortable situations but i'm seeing and i i don't know about you um but i am seeing a big change even on social media where people even though they may disagree are starting to listen to each other yeah. and are able to talk with each other not at each other and Thank you. Um, yes you know i and that that is a big big thing which i'm so happy to see because i know it can be so tough um especially being behind the compass of a phone or a computer you can mm. lash out and say anything and whilst i understand where um you know everyone is hurting right now and quite understandably um especially our black brothers and sisters i i i understand that but what i am seeing is this wonderful um engagement of people from um all over the world that mm -hmm. are are having these really important and uncomfortable conversations in such a respectful manner and yeah. for those that don't understand they just put their hands up like i tell everyone here you know i'm going to make mistakes and i'm going to learn um and we're going to teach and help each other because that's on us that we have to continue mm -hmm. doing that kind of work too but how do you find it back home like i know there were a lot of protests at home as well yeah. um, but there are also these anti uh protesters to the protesting and you know yeah of course well i think yeah just going back to what you were saying about putting your hand up and saying i i don't know you yeah. know because it's a lot of relearning and it's a lot of growing i think i i agree with what you're i think there's a lot because in the beginning as well i i felt that i was scared to get it wrong you know i i felt scared to put a foot wrong or say the wrong thing with good intentions and if you do have good intentions and you are still learning i don't think you can go wrong really and and if someone does call you out on it and say actually it's not that it's this and you go oh then then you go okay thank you and it's then constructive. you say, thank you i'm listening yeah, yeah it's constructive yeah. um i think i have experienced not personally but i have seen people slamming others for getting it wrong though when they're trying and that i kind of i find unsupportive and unhelpful because yeah. as as you said we're all still learning and we're all still growing and from a personal perspective as well growing kind of young devonian i don't think i saw a oh. black person mm -hmm. until i don't think i saw a black person until i went to drama school when i was 18 seriously where where i lived and where i grew up and and i went to a public school where it was you know uh, there was white privilege in in a kind of all girls private school um and so for me it was just that was my norm growing up that it wasn't that I, and i didn't feel if i you know if i saw some a person of color that i would go they're so different or i have you know we all have racial tendencies racist tendencies but it was it was just for me growing up there was there was no one that i identified with growing up like that um and so moving to london the kind of epitome of culture you know the it kind of melee uh, uh, like a hot pot of culture i said my mm -hmm. my eyes kind of they like came out of my head with all of the kind of i wanted to absorb everything like a sponge and i kind of couldn't get enough of what i wanted to learn from everybody um and i was so grateful for that because i had grown up in this little bubble um and there was so much more for me to learn and i grew up i grew up in london i i kind of and i'm so grateful for that otherwise you know because there are still people around where i live who have never left or they've never experienced a kind of other world or other cultures that are out there and that we can all learn from each other and so and celebrate it's, yeah yeah and and we should all celebrate each other and and going back to the protest there was one um here a few weeks ago that I went to um wearing my mask with a couple of my girlfriends and we went with um uh with placards black lives matter um and uh I think the other one said I may never understand but I stand um uh so we went with those and it was there was no backlash there was no um it was surprising that there was no 
and 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 what's the word? Uh, uh, like you know, animosity between yeah. everybody coming together. It was just met with love, which was gorgeous. And this what is I a really, time for transparency, you know, and authenticity. Exactly. And then at the end, we had speak. We had speakers who would, you know, it was kind of open, free for all. Grab the mic if you want to speak. And we had people from from white to black to people of color grabbing, the, not grabbing the mic, you know, taking the mic, mm -hmm. and they were talking into it. And they were. We had a teacher who was saying, "We must teach this in schools. We must. We must teach the history." Um, and then I had, uh, there was a, a, a white woman saying that she was married to a black man and she'd experienced both sides of everything. And what I really relished was the kind of, at moments, irreverence of it all. And she just kept saying, it's really fucking, sorry, excuse my language, shit, isn't it? <laughs> it's really horrible. And then yeah. there was another black guy who took to the mic and he said, my mother used to combat racism by going out into the streets with a slipper. And I thought there was, there was something beautiful about that that was just so honest and true. And yeah. then we had more constructive ways in which we could all come together. But there was moments, because otherwise it becomes a rage, you know, and you can't hear the individual voices. But what was great about that rally is what I'd say it was, rather than a protest, was that it was just people speaking into a mic and sharing their story. And it didn't matter where they were coming from. And there were moments of real honesty, truth, humor, light, and moments of real passion that was so infectious. And you, I've never been to a protest before. And that was my first one. And I just, I just felt so a part of something and it felt really magical. It's, it's, it really does bring a sense of community together. It does. Because essentially we are all, you know, we are all brothers and sisters in this global family. Yeah. And we have to look out for each other. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and and um, you're absolutely right when you say that we need to start teaching, you know, the kids, our kids, but at such a young age, um, to be aware of these mm. things. And, and it's, it's so sort of heartbreaking at the same time because children, they're so, you know, they're so innocent and they acknowledge each and every um, other child's identity and, and um, personality, they embrace and they, they just see each other as, oh, you're my friend. And, yeah. Yeah, but, but I feel like when I see kids playing with each other from different walks of life, they acknowledge each other's color in, in, in love, in, in acceptance, mm. and they don't even think of it. It doesn't even cross their mind. So racism is something that is taught. I think one thing that I remember, I, I, was, I was, this is when I was single, and I was dating a boy from Ireland. Um, and, and he took me back to visit his family up in Tipperary. I went to Tipperary. And it wow. was a beautiful place, guys. It's gorgeous. Ireland is so stunning. But it is a long way to Tipperary, just like that song said. <laughs> I was like that petulant child saying, I'll be there yet, I'll be there yet, I'll be there yet. <laughs> this is years ago. But I went to go meet um, Liam's family, who was so lovely. And I'll never forget uh, when, um, you know, their backyard is like acres and acres and acres of land. Um, because he comes from a horseback riding family. And so it was, it was just so beautiful. And I remember that there were these um, cute, adorable, like five, six-year-old kids that were kind of standing on the opposite side of the stream. And I was there and I saw them, I thought, oh, I was like, hello, you know, <laughs> say hi to them. And they were just looking at me, like in complete awe, because they had never seen a brown girl before and they were just like oh like and, and it wasn't they weren't scared they were just so like what yeah wow <laughs> yeah you you don't look like me and and it was it was such a interesting moment like i i was heartbroken and at the same time um well, I hope, you know, if, if they're going to meet someone who's not white, I, I hope I didn't scare them. I don't think they were. Um, they were very shy, but you could see that they're complete awe. And I remember asking him, I was like, 
Hey, okay. He goes, no, it's just that, you know, there's not a lot of people that look like you in this neighborhood. So um, that's probably the first time that they're seeing a person of color. Yeah. And, um, and like you said, you know, it's, it's not their fault. They live in this, this bubble and over there it's predominantly Caucasian, yeah. but um, it kind of also made me sad. And I just hoped that they would explore the world. That's one thing my dad always wanted me to do. He would say this all the time when I was a little girl. He's like, I want you to go and explore the world. I want you to see the world. I want you to, to meet people from all types of cultures so that you learn and understand and grow and, and um, you know, take away something from each of those cultures and people that you meet along the way. And, I'm, and of course, as a little girl, I was like, no, Daddy, I want to stay home with you and be with you and Mom. He's like, no, 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 I want you to go and spread your wings and fly and see the world. Because I think that just brings, like you said, a lot of awareness, um, life experience. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, it's so important. Um, well, because change is uncomfortable, isn't it, really? And things that are different and things that are kind of important are going to be challenging and they're going to be uncomfortable. But why would you want to do anything else? You know, why would you want to stay safe? Why would you want to stay in a in a kind of comfort zone when yeah you might make mistakes yeah you may graze your knee yeah it's like i think it's what you're saying about that kind of childlike wonder and children running and, and seeing people as they are kind of seeing their soul in a way mm -hmm. I, I i i think there's so much to be taken from just not like being childish but being childlike where there is there is no kind of judgment you know, there is no, a child will see you for you. And yes. they'll, you know, if a baby, if you are smiling at a baby, that baby is smiling back, <laughs> you know? And if, if, you're, if you're screaming at a baby, that baby is crying. So, you know, it, it's kind of, they feel everything so exquisitely that there's something, it's not childish, but it's childlike that you kind of, it's reprogramming everything. So you just kind of strip everything back and you just kind of, you see the world afresh, how kind of someone who hasn't experienced racism has seen it before. And so they just go, oh, so this is, this is what it is. But mm -hmm. as you say, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of kind of reprogramming and, and, and things that have to change that have been set in place for a very, very long time. There's a yeah. lot of work to be done. Just going back, Karen, though, just before I forget, going back to your um, list for your diaries, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just going back to the uh, list of possible accounts that might be useful for everybody. Um, yeah. there's, a, there's a guy who, who's a writer on Big Mouth. I don't know if, if anyone sees that show. It's quite an obscene show. Um, <laughs> I um, it down. But he's a writer on it. And he, he does these kind of videos on his Instagram page. He's called Brandon Kyle Goodman. Mm -hmm. um, and he talks so beautifully. He's married to a white man. He's, he's a black man. Um, and what he says um, in terms of kind of interracial relationships, uh, what he says um, about uh, being a person of color or being a black man um, and, and how that kind of has affected him. And he talks earnest, like honestly to his white friends. And it's almost like he's speaking to you as a friend. I've never met him. But I would, you know, I'd happily be his friend and learn from him. And as you said, he didn't need to take the time to kind of educate. But he has videos on his Instagram page that are really worth a look about this subject. And, and that's Brandon Kyle Goodman. Good, yes. So, uh, yeah, Brandon. So is it B-R-A-N-D-O-N? -N, and then Kyle, K-Y-L-E. And then G-O-O-D-M-A-N. And then the second account I have is this gorgeous woman called Dr. Batiste Berry. Mm -hmm. um, and she's a doctor, but she also has these videos that it, I feel she's from another world. She is just, she's as, as I feel with you, Karen, uh, and a, like, the kind of warmth that someone speaks with. When you look at it, there's something in her eyes that is gold. And it twinkles and she's so twinkly and she's got this gorgeous video. She has so many, um, but she has this gorgeous video on her, on her Instagram. Oh, and Dr. Bertice's doctor and then B-E-R-T-I-C-E 
and then berry as in a raspberry or a strawberry. Um, she has this one video on her Instagram that she used to be a cleaner and she talks about cleaning and she talks about this advice this woman gave her as she was starting out as a cleaner. Um, and the, this woman gave this piece of advice and she says, whatever you do, don't forget to clean the lights. The lights is where everything shines. Um, and, and kind of Dr. Batiste, she kind of took this on board and said, oh, okay, I don't really know what that means. And then she would go and clean these houses and she would make sure that she really scrubbed these lights and she really gave them a good shine. And then when the person would come back and, and see her work and she'd clean the lights, everything would glow. And, every, and, it also, and it's just the way she tells the story of how she, you know, it's so simple. And she could, she could be saying her shopping list. And yes. I, would, I, would be, I would be going, yes, tell me They're more. Bread, is it? Eggs? Um, but it, she's just the way her speaking, uh, the way she talks and the kind of twinkle with which she tells these stories are just beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I could listen to her all, oh, all day. Really? Yeah, I cannot Dr. wait. Dr. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to follow those two accounts. And I hope you lovelies are taking notes. And I know um, Charlotte and uh, a few of you have been so kind enough to do bullet points after each of the lives. So, and I'll uh, put that particular video because it's so gorgeous. I'll put that one up on my story as well so thank people can you, find lovely. it. Yeah. Yay, I can't wait. So um, you've moved into a new home, right? <laughs> Yes. So are you in like domestic bliss of like decor and arranging things, especially during the pandemic, the need to create sanctuary and to make your home feel safe and, and this haven? I, are you just enjoying all of that? I am, well, I am now. It was, it, was, it was tricky in the beginning because as I say, I was kind of quarantining alone. Um, and I had camping furniture as my kind of sofa. <laughs> and I had it just all directed at the TV so that if I wanted to watch something, I was just lounging, you know, putting my cup of tea in the little slots beside the <laughs> So I was just there kind of watching TV. Um, and then it got to the point where I kind of said, no, this is silly now. I need to get proper. Because I was getting a bit of anxiety about not feeling at home and not, you know, your home is your sanctuary, as you say. So I was kind of feeling, okay, I need to, I need to make some plans and get a sofa yeah. in. I need to get some, mm -hmm. some, I need to get some nice and forks. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, but I was also worried at the same time because, you know, two people, oh, there's a bug. Uh, two people live in this house. I think it's attached to my eyelash. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, two, people, um, two people live in this house and I was I was I didn't want to make any decisions that would you know uh, be I of course I know my boyfriend so I know what he likes but of course it's a joint decision and I wouldn't want him to come back and go oh you've done the house then so there's nothing for me to do I don't have this isn't mine this doesn't feel like mine or anything like that but at the same time I needed to get the bare basics in I needed to have a sofa um, I needed a bed, um, so you know I needed to get the bare basics. But we discussed a lot of these things before he went away, so I knew what we wanted. Um, and we had a really sweet moment before he went away and before quarantine happened, where we went to a bed shop and we were you would have laughed at us, Karen. We went around with these pillows. They gave us we like they lay on the bed and got <laughs> tested. And they gave us pillows and we were wandering around the shop with these pillows and then lying on beds with the pillows and going, no, nope, not this one. And then wandering around to the next one with these pillows, finding that one and going, yes, this one's quite comfy. It was like, I don't know, Goldilocks or something, just going around and testing all the beds. Um, so that was gorgeous. And then we, we kind of, we found a bed um, that we really liked, but it was super expensive. And so we thought, we'll just hang on, you know, hang on for a little bit. Um, and then while he was away, I got it for us. But it's a super king size bed. Um, oh. And so we put the like bed in bedroom. Um, we can't fit anything else in the bedroom. It's just the super king size bed. Um, <laughs> but we, so we now have a um, bed, sofa, um, and my dad has given us a load of hand-me-down kind of, we've got this really gorgeous old hospital trolley. There's kind of this <gasps> antique-y, um, oh, and it's, it's now our kind of cocktail cabinets or kind of drinks cupboards. Um, oh, and it's love so that. beautiful. And yeah. the most impressive thing is that we had our, our garden was left, uh, probably, sh oh, I can't tell you, um, where our garden was left to us in a kind of jungle. Everything was overgrown, um, bushes kind of o all over the place. And um, my boyfriend, he went out there a few weeks ago and he gutted everything. So he wow. gutted, I've got before and after pictures, we gutted everything 
and then he kind of leveled our kind of grass side of things, dug up all the old grass um, and kind of leveled everything with like a hoe. Wow. And kind of just, yeah, really backbreaking stuff. I went out there a couple of times and did a couple. I was like, over to you again, babe, and <laughs> off you go. <laughs> um, but, you know, <laughs> can I get you anything to eat? Um, so I did, my, and then I was kind of helping him out there, but he basically did the bare brunt of everything and then we got turf in and um it was kind of we've never not again we haven't done any of this before i've never owned a house i've never lived with someone before i've never done a garden before i don't know what's going on um, <laughs> so we got this turf and we did so many like youtube video kind of research on it um and then we kind of laid this turf and we we're like okay finger, like fingers crossed it's going to take whatever that means and it kind of roots itself in there and then a few days later we went to kind of tug on the grass to see if it was sound and it was embedded in the soil and it has and now it's flourishing it looks beautiful <laughs> so yeah i feel very kind of very much a homebody which is gorgeous yeah. um You've so got yeah. a green thumb both of you clearly i know too. I know, it's very funny as well, because we keep, like, I think the majority of money that we spend has been on plants. So we go to, like, the garden centre, and we get things that don't match, or things that just look pretty when we get there, and we find that they were meant to be planted in winter, or, you know, they, they only come out in, in summer next year. And we're going, oh, interesting. Um, so we're learning yeah. as we go. It's a massive, massive learning curve, but we're, we're so enjoying it as we go along. It's, yeah, it's gorgeous. But I'm also I... working at my grocery store around the corner, mm -hmm. so um, I'm still working there, um, which is, uh, which is, really kind of it's it's really lovely because you get i feel because it's literally right in the corner i feel such a great sense of community and i'm meeting all the people say that. yeah meeting all the people that are my neighbors and so they come in and i'm getting to know each one now and kind of it's just really really beautiful so yeah i'm doing that that's so lovely lovely i miss yeah. home so so much yeah. I, I ache for it yeah um, and I was hoping the plan was to come home. I was going to finish filming Fear the Walking Dead. We usually finish around this time. And, uh, and then the plan was after Comic-Con to go straight back home to England for the summer. Um, because as you know, summers in England, I can't imagine being anywhere else. Um, they're so magical. Uh, yeah. But you know, Slight pickle. <laughs> oh, I know, my love. But no, and as going back to what you said about your your parents and things like that, this won't last forever. I think that's what we need to keep reminding ourselves. You know yeah. that already we're seeing changes back here in the UK. That lockdown is kind of is slowly loosening, and and we're finding our feet. And and kind of it feels like we're we're coming back to some sort of normality. It feels yeah. like. You know, this won't last forever and you will be home soon. And please tell me when you are so I can come and see you. Yeah. Well, we always <laughs> do our tea sessions and we go out for like afternoon tea or we catch up and have a, a good old girly natter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I miss, I can't wait. That's, no. that's the one thing I, I keep, uh, I've suggested to some of the fans too, is that you can put together your vision board and that doesn't have to change. Yeah. And you can plan, you know, make those plans that you want, you know, and you put it right on your vision board and you see all the things that you want to do and all that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. I think it's important because that yeah. kind of keeps you excited and gives you um, things to hope for. And I'll tell you what, when things go back to the new norm, because it will be different, but I do believe it will be for the better. Yes. Um, I feel like we're all going to step into this, this new um, chapter with so much more humility and, and gratitude in our hearts for even the simplest things. And mm. I, I, I'd like to think that we're going to be so much more evolved and uh, have learned so much from this time mm. and realize that all of us are truly survivors and resilient. And I think what warms my heart too is that we do see, yes, there's the news of everything that's happening, but we do see acts of kindness um, within our communities, mm. outside of our communities, uh, neighborhoods, people just helping each other and listening to each other and being yeah. there for each other. It just warms my heart. I feel that, that shift now more, more than ever. So that makes me happy. Now there's a bunch of questions. Like you had tons of Q and A's yeah. and all of them are so wonderful guys. So we've got last 10 minutes. So I'm going to pick some for Rose. Let me see. At Helena, Roquel Luz, 
She asks, what moment in your life or thing that happened will you cherish forever? Oh, wow. I know. That's, oh my gosh, the moment that I cherish forever. Um, that's hard. That's really hard. Um, oh, I don't, I don't, there's so many, so many things. There's so many things. But things that kind of leap out at me are um, the, the moment I met, I remember the moment I met my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So that is a massive thing for me. But there is also, the, I remember the, play, like, um, once upon a time, I remember sitting on the plane going to Canada, a place that, you know, I found out two days before that I'd got the job and suddenly I'm on a plane. <laughs> and then I'm not sat on the plane and thinking, this is, this is, this is a bit of an adventure. So I think, I, th I think, I think that's one of the moments that really sticks in my mind is going, things are going to change a little bit here. I, and I'm going to spend some time in a place that is unknown. So this is terribly exciting. Um, so that really sticks in my mind. Oh, the plane yeah. ride to Canada. Yeah, both of those are such good, good events. Good events. I like it. Um, okay. At Lauren Low Kirby asks, what do you do to stay and keep yourself motivated during this time? I mean, we saw uh, firstly, hi Lauren. Um, <laughs> to stay motivated. Um, I, think, I think it's what we've touched on really of kind of moving your body in some form, um, yeah. just keeping active. Um, and like, on a slightly kind of more somber note, not, not worrying, not, uh, I don't know how, like, that um, suicides have gone up 200%. Yes. So um, talking, talk, even if you don't want to talk, find someone that will listen to you. And there are so many that will listen. So I think staying motivated and staying aware and present and staying, I think as a, as a listener as well, staying available. You know, there are people, even if you don't need that help at that moment, that particular moment, there will be someone that will. So I think staying motivated and staying present and aware is something that we can do for each other in this time, especially. Um, so I think that was something that kind of, I think, I think it's just, for me, staying motivated is taking the thoughts and pressure off myself and putting them into something else or someone else who needs it. Yeah. Because, because in doing that, you're taking the anxiety away from yourself because it's not about you. So there is something out there that is more important. So I think when you realize that and putting the onus on, on that other thing, then you go, okay, okay, this is, I'm here now. I'm, I'm, I'm switched on, I'm ready. Um, that, that's no, I, motivated. I, I completely agree. I'm so glad that you mentioned and stressed the importance of mental health. Mm. Um, th this is something that I will never ta tire talking about on my team account. Particularly, I, I start particularly in men as well. Men, yeah. uh, you know, are kind of, uh, I don't know what it is, but they are of the minority that feel they can talk. And so in, when it comes to, to men as well, yes. I would urge, urge talking. Because I feel people. like naturally as women, we, we tend to be more communicative. Yes. And we talk more. Like the sure. way we deal with situations is we feel better in talking with, with our mums, with our sisters, with our siblings, or with our girlfriends. Yeah. You know, we naturally have that inclination. And I know with, with guys and boys, they tend to keep it locked in. Mm. And, and I'm so glad that you mentioned it because mm. this isn't about judgment now. We are going through a pandemic. <laughs> yes. Yes. And also, you know, facing uh, and hurting so much over what's happening to um, our black brothers and sisters, the racial inequality and bringing mm. up all those um, feelings. Um, it's, it's all coming to a head. And this is where I say a lot of us are so quick to, to want to cancel 2020. And, yes, and, exactly. And, yes. And no. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't cancel 2020. Let 2020 be the year where we learn and grow and continue to evolve. Mm. Um, but mental health is something that the reason why I started Tea with Karen is to promote the importance of emotional well-being, emotional stamina, because this is something that none of us have ever been through. And this is something that will go down in history that we will look back on. And um, it's so important to keep 
reminding um, all our followers that none of them are alone in navigating through these challenges every day. And that it, that there are going to be ups and downs and twists and turns. There's going to be moments where you want to scream. There's going to be moments where you want to cry. Do it all. Do it yes. all. Let it out, you know. <laughs> and, and then take deep breaths and say, okay, I'm alive. I'm strong. I'm breathing. <laughs> I, I saw on um, this, damn it. <laughs> I saw on Twitter. I saw on Twitter a casting director uh, posted if the only thing you've added to your CV is got through pandemic, that is okay. <laughs> you yes. know, you know, and I think that was so gorgeous of her to say that. And I was like, yeah, you're bloody right because none of us, as you say, have been through this before. So the fact that you're getting through it, the fact that you got out of your pajamas today, perhaps, is enough. <laughs> You know, that's okay. That's okay. And that's okay too. <laughs> I wore jeans. I'm wearing jeans now for the first time in weeks. It's absolutely horrifying. I mean, my pajamas put on the camera. <laughs> I love you. That's why I love you so much. It's oh. just like, oh my God. Okay, I'll put on a je pair of jeans for Rose. <laughs> and I'm like, damn. I'm like, Oh, maybe not such a great idea. No. <laughs> I'm like enjoying being in my comfy track bottoms on oh. my days. But it's, it's you do things that are going to give you a laugh. You're going to do things that, that whatever that you need to do, check in with yourselves regularly. Mm. Know mm. that there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. Everything you're feeling is valid and important. And yeah. like I said, that's when um, you have the time to digest and process what you're feeling and then you let go. You let yeah. go, you go and do something um, and that's going to make you uh, feel good about yourself. Even if it's for like five, ten minutes, whatever it is. I think it's just mm. so important to do that. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a good one. Uh, okay. Uh, such good questions here. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Um, okay. At Alma Maka asks, what was your favorite scene to film in Once Upon a Time? What was my favourite scene to film in Once Upon a Time? Um, I think in Girl in the Tower, so my episode in season seven, where I'm talking to the troll and I'm saying goodbye. And I think for me that was such a kind of an emotional scene because she's, it's, I think she says something like, I'm okay. And I think there's something in her saying, I'm okay, I'll be okay. That was just so gorgeous um, that I just loved talking. You know, I was talking to a bloomin' tennis ball, um, but, you know, playing my troll. But there was something in, I love that, the, that episode, the way it was written. It's so beautiful because it's, it's about growing up. Um, and that scene in particular was about letting go and, and kind of taking ownership. Um, and also, like, everyone talks to me about it as well, but the first time I met Tierra, my Mad Archer um, counterpart, was the day we snogged for about five hours. Mm -hmm. So um, so that was a funny one because it was when we were so nervous because we hadn't, we didn't know each other at that point, obviously. So, you know, throw us in at the deep end. Um, we kind of just met for a second and then yeah. we were just lovers and we were yeah. just in love and we had to play this epic love story together. And we had to play this epic love story kind of towards the end of <laughs> our whole adventure together. So um, I found that really tricky, but also so much fun because we were in the middle of the woods and it was raining and we were kind of skidding <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. Um, so, so I will always remember that because it was the, our first scene together. Um, and it was such a monumental scene for, for those two and their story. So, yeah, I'll always remember that one as well. That's what I love about Once Upon a Time, too, is that um, they take these iconic Disney characters and place them in everyday situations. I love yeah. the inclusivity, the yeah. celebration of inclusivity. Um, that just warms my heart so much, you know, that you can have these uh, powerful and iconic Disney characters that we... As, as young kids and even big kids have, have grown up with and looked up to mm. and, and see a side of their humanity. Yes. Um, you know, and, and, and to be all encompassing and all, you know, inclusive and celebrate that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's so important. And that's teaching, you know, kids at a very young age that mm. you have to just be you. You have to love yourself and accept yourself for who you are, you know, and, 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 um, 
and to be proud of that. Yeah, and, 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 and proud of your flaws so much. as well. So yeah. all your, your bits and imperfections that you don't like, someone else is going to love those. Yes. Um, and they're going to nurture those. So yeah. it's kind of embracing every single facet of you, which is gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. celebrating that. You know? Yeah. That's so nice. I love that. I can't believe, can you, an hour's gone by so quickly, love. What time is it? Nine o'clock already. It's, yeah, already. It still looks now, is it night, night? Or it still looks like it's daylight, sort of. I've got, I've got a massive, um, uh, you can see it in the window. See, you got light, I've got light. too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I knew it was gonna go down. It was, it was, it's a lovely sunset at the moment, but yeah, we lose light here around now. So, um, so yeah, oh, so. No. It's, I love you so much. much. I love you so much. There's so many great questions that have come in. Um, thank you guys for sending those Q and A's. Um, Rose, do you want to say anything to the gang on here? Well, firstly, thank you for joining. Uh, I don't know where to look. I feel like they're like, <laughs> I'm an actor. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you. Firstly, thank you so much for joining us for this hour that has sped by, it literally has. Um, it's like, Karen, what you're doing is such a gorgeous thing for all of us. You are a light in this world, genuinely. Every time I see you, I just, I'm filled with so much joy. So just to spend this time with you for an hour is just a blessing. Um, and I think just as we're moving forward, as we're coming through this quarantine as well, just kind of as, as, we've, as we've been saying, just practice humility, practice listening, really listening and knowing that it's a work in progress. We're all works in progress. So take the pressure off yourself. And as I've said, put it on something else, put it on someone else. Yeah. Um, and and uh, if you can help in your community, start local, you know, volunteer, you know, someone might need some shopping getting done. Someone might need their dog being walked. So start local. And then if everyone does local, then, oh my gosh, it's a, that's a pandemic. Yeah. Um, so yeah. be the pandemic that is filled with kindness. Um, yes. Is the final thing that I would say. Yeah. yeah. Amen to that. I love that. And yeah. yeah, it's holding each other accountable in wonderful ways, you know, yeah. that if you, you don't need to go through anything alone. And when Rose says, put it on someone else, you know, you ask for help, you ask someone else yeah. to come in and, and help you through it. That's what we're here for each other is to extend our, our arms out and hold each other and elevate each other. I think that's so important. Well, you bring out the best in me. The gang on here brings out the best in me. Yeah. And I, I, I'm so inspired by, by all of you. And Rose, you know, I love you so much and I miss you tons. And I'm so happy that you were able to have a cup of tea today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. And let's talk. We'll soon. do it again. We'll have yes. to bake. I keep yeah. I'm wanting to do these baking things. And it started off with my dear friend Danielle. But we should do baking um, things because I'm sure uh, you've got some really good family recipes up your sleeve. I'm down for that. So I'm half Polish. I'm sure I could find some Polish recipes. Oh, yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. It's in the works. It's in the works. <laughs> All right. Bye, That's my gosh. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.